Welcome to episode 30 of Jesus Coffee Barbells, where we are heating up your coffee and your faith. My name is Sarah Hoffman. You can find me on Instagram at Mommy McMomface. And I am Amber George, and you can find me on Instagram at Refined by Iron. Today, we are going to be talking about all things food. So that's going to include everything from diets to lifestyle changes, intentional eating, good healthy snacks and meal preps and Amber is going to be our expert today in the field and I'm probably just going to be asking her questions and chiming in uh, mm-hmm. very little during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Yay food! <laughs> but before we begin, I have a question for you. Always. Okay. I'm really excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Scooby Doo. Really? Mm hmm. That's a really popular one. Yeah. I'm basic. What can I say? <laughs> Scooby Doo. The old school Scooby Doo. Let me, let me make sure that I'm clear. Like the old school 1970s Scooby Doo. Is that when it released? The... Was 1970s? Uh huh. If you look in the, if you look in the old episodes at the very beginning when it like, like it opens up and it's like Scooby Dooby Doo. And if you look at the bottom, yeah, huh? If you look at the bottom, it says copyright and it's like 1979. So, wow. okay, I didn't realize how it always baffles me when I when I look back how old cartoons are because I watched them growing up and so I just assumed they were that era, like not like 20 years, well, 10 years prior. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Did you ever watch Animaniacs? <laughs> Stop laughing at me. All right. <laughs> well, no, boo. Okay. Did I ever watch Animaniacs? Yes. Sometimes. It really didn't keep my attention. Oh, really? Oh, man. Maybe I didn't. I think I really enjoyed Animaniacs because the humor's great, but also because my parents loved it, and I think kind of their love for it rubbed off on me. But Okay. Now I just really enjoy it too. I haven't let my kids watch it yet because some of the jokes are uh, adult. A lot of the jokes okay. are adult. But I haven't seen it in a really long time, so I can't really make a comment. I, I'm, I mean, it's literally been since I was a kid that I have like watched it. So yeah. So yeah. Now you. So you liked Animaniacs? That's fun. Yes, that's that funny. Was my favorite. Okay, Amber. All things food, yes. right? Okay. So tell me... I get lots of questions about food. I know. I figure you do. So tell me real quick. I get lots of questions about food. Okay. Why... You don't like the word diet. Is that correct? That's right. I hate that word. (laughs) But is it a diet if you're not changing your lifestyle, if it's temporary? So diet... the, The term diet is used... It... The... 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 I'm already getting like, <laughs> oh, so, like oh, I hate this. It's like it, it's already getting me wound up. So, <laughs> diet technically is what you eat. The technical term for diet is what you eat. Marketing has turned it when someone says your diet. Marketing has turned it to where people think of the term like they think of. I'm going on a diet or I can't have that. I'm on a diet that, but the technical term diet is simply what you eat every day. So if you say I am doing the paleo diet or whatever, people tend to think that they're on a diet instead of it's basically they're eating paleo style which is a specific type of eating so no I do not like the term diet because it's for it's very confusing unless you are in the industry as a professional it tends to get confusing so I try to use the term style because eating style and pushing an eating style So instead of saying, I'm going on a diet, I should say I've changed my diet. 
Right, right. And you can say stuff like, I've changed my diet. I mean, say whatever you want to say. But <laughs> but the way I coach my people is saying things like, I've changed my diet. Like, instead of saying, like, I've changed my diet, I've changed my style of eating. Just the term diet, having grown up in the early 2000s, like, I was born in the 80s. I was a child in the 90s. And my teen years are, like, 2000 to like 2006, five, six, something like that, um, when I graduated high school. That era was size zero, as skinny as possible. If you didn't have abs like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, you were like, you were overweight. And that is not true. Yeah. So... But that was what was shoved. We didn't have social media. We had magazines. We had big, glossy magazines. Right. And that was our... And it was just shoved, 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 shoved down our throats of what we are supposed to look like. Now, I am a firm believer that there is a healthy weight for each and every person. Each and every person, there is a healthy weight. Yes. And that health depends on a lot of different things. But you don't have to be bone thin. And I think that that is where my, my like harsh, don't use the term diet or skinny because it's just, I guess because it's the, uh, what was drilled into people my age, I'm 34, people my age, what they were drilled into our heads and in our, in our time. So I cared less about what I look like, I think, than most girls growing up, just because I categorize myself, like, in the tomboy section Mm -hmm. of of, uh, Mm -hmm. life, so I didn't care a whole lot uh, about, like, weight or necessarily what I look like, or, like, I literally wore basketball shorts and t-shirts, like, 90% of my wardrobe. But well, I, I, that's and that's what's crazy is I did too. I played softball. I was a catcher or shortstop for my softball team, and I played basketball. So my legs, like because I squatted all the time, like yeah. my legs were decently built for a you know, young woman my my age, and that was not considered cute. And it so anyway. But yes, I did too. I wore athletic clothes all the time. But deep down, I still wanted to, as as a girl, I still wanted to be pretty. Even though I wasn't afraid to get sweaty and dirty and stuff like that. Right. Still had that desire to to be pretty, to be, yeah. to feel that way. So. I think it helps too, like having, and it, who you surround yourself with too. Sure. Like, Very I don't true. know what your circle looked like. And it's just different mindsets, too. My dad had always, since I also played catcher, I did gymnastics, I did basketball and softball. Um, my dad had always commented, though, like, he's like, he never made my legs seem like it's something that I should be self-conscious about. He's like, man, your legs are muscular. You can do so much. Like, he was always very right. body positive towards me. My dad right. was. And my parents were, too. Yeah. Yes. And, but I didn't yeah. have friends that really commented on it either. But I lived in a really, really small town. Um, I graduated with, like, 24 people in my class. Everybody knew everybody. So there wasn't, like, a whole lot of, like, bullying for me personally. Right. So I was homeschooled. But right. in high school, in, mid, in the, like, junior high and high school, the 7th, 8th grade on to 12th grade, I hung out with a lot of public school kids because the, uh, like, my youth group was public school, and then I started dating David in 11th grade, and he went to public school, so I had a lot more exposure to those types of influences of, like, the glossy magazines, the the body yeah. image that was unhealthy and that sort of thing. I had more. So even though at home, I had a very positive, I don't want to say push, but like my parents were very body image positive. Yeah. I still had that outside influence that. So I think that that, I don't think I know that is where my, this severe dislike for the term diet came from because I knew girls 
that when I was 15, 14, 15, 16, that would go on diets. And they more no more needed to go on a diet than think. But it was because of the peer pressure, the influence, and the, it was, because I remember thinking, like, I'm too hungry to go on a diet. But I played sports. I played basketball. I played softball. I was busy, active all the time. So I could pretty much eat whatever I wanted. Yeah, for sure. You know, but uh, but I knew girls, and I just remember thinking, man, I'd be too hungry. But I remember thinking, maybe I should go on a diet. And I remember mentioning it to my dad. I was like, Dad, you, you have to know my dad. My dad is very blunt. But I'm like, Dad there are girls that I know that are going on a diet. Should I go on a diet? He was like, honey, what are you going to do on a diet? He was like, you would just fall over with all of the activity you do. You would just fall over because you would not have the energy that you need. You're not going on no diet. And I was, you know, just. I, I have met your dad a handful of times, but I love him. <laughs> That's just who he is. That's just who he is. And so I just remember that very, very What are you going to do on a diet? And so. Anyway, well, the reason I brought up diet initially, you had mentioned earlier, you said that people can use whatever word they want. But mm-hmm. The reason I brought it up is because I feel like there's a lot of misconception about the word diet and mm-hmm. mindset. I think that your mindset has a lot to do with how you will eat and how you think about food. If you could keep thinking about it as like a diet, as like, I need to lose weight and look a certain way, I think Mm -hmm. that can really affect how you approach food and it could lead you more negative. Right. So when it, yeah. So when it comes to my clients, the more I've matured as a coach, the more I tend to see and notice when someone that wants to look a certain way because of a mindset issue versus someone who wants to look a certain way because they want to build muscle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I have a girl that comes to me and she's like, I want to, I want to be able to squat 175 for three. I need to go on some kind of like diet to do that. I know well that her thinking is she knows she's going to need to eat a little bit more. Her term for diet is not to look a certain way. She wants to look a certain way by building some muscle, building some glutes, building. Some... Does that make sense? Yes. Versus someone that comes to me and says, "Okay, I, they they may not be overweight. I've had this happen many times. I really need to lose some weight." And I will ask them the question, "Tell me why you think you need to lose some weight." Well, I just do. Okay. And so, like, we have to go through the, like, having them weigh and showing them that they are within a healthy body range. They don't need to lose weight. They can eat at maintenance and, you know, that kind of thing. So, when I approach a client, like, when a client approaches me and we get to the nutrition part, I ask specific questions just to kind of, because I obviously I can't diagnose anything. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist, psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. But I have seen the tendencies of those that have an issue with eating versus those that don't. Right. And depending on the mindset of food is how I will approach nutrition. And if the mindset towards food is flawed, I will highly recommend that they see someone such as like a dietitian or something that can give them a medical level of, you know, cause that's out of my scope of practice, obviously. Right. So I try, I, I'm very careful when it comes to that kind of thing. Right. So. So one of the things I learned from you, Amber, was not necessarily like diet as in changing everything that I eat, but uh, intentional eating. You've taught me intentional mm-hmm. eating. Yeah. Mindful, purposeful, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Intentional eating. Yep. So can you explain kind of what intentional eating is? Sure. So intentional eating is pretty much what it sounds like is thinking about everything that you put in your mouth, not in an obsessive way, but being aware. Yeah. Because 
we get to this point where we're going through the day, whether we're at the office or with kids or whatever the case is, and we get hungry, or we may not even be hungry, but something is sitting there on the counter and we just eat it. Like, we don't even think about it, we just eat it. <laughs> if it's there, there like, Amber, I want it in my out? mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, but thinking it through of, am I actually hungry? Is this, is this, whatever it is, going to put me towards my goals? Now, don't be obsessive with it, but just thinking it through. Because there are, I, I've had clients where they're like, I snack at night. And I'm like, well, there's not, not anything inherently wrong about having snacks at night. What are you snacking on? How much are you snacking on it? Right. So, and then come to find out, they're eating two or three servings either two or three servings of a snack, or they're eating as they cook. Yeah. A little bit of cheese here. We've got some of this here. We've got some chips here, which can add up pretty fast. Instead of just, like, maybe having a couple of things to kind of tie you over until you're done cooking, then sit down and eat your meal. I've so been hard. so guilty of that myself. <laughs> Or I'll be piecing, 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 and then I sit down with my food in front of me and go, I'm not hungry anymore. That is not intentional eating. I'm guilty. But I'm so I've done it. When I'm cooking food. I know. I know. So that means that 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 goes back to not being intentional earlier in the day. Right. Right? So not being intentional about having a snack because you know when you're cooking dinner you're gonna be hungry. Guilty. I'm not this is not a <laughs> Amber does that all right all the time. I don't. Not at all. Uh, that I'm so guilty of it. I'll make guac. Mm. Like whatever I'm cooking, I'll make guac. And it's it's just simple. And I'll eat it either with chips, like a couple of tortilla chips, or stick vegetables. But I have to be really careful. Guac is very filling. And I will eat the whole thing if I'm that hungry. So I just have to be careful. And it's, yeah. that is that is what you call intentional eating of being knowing what you're putting in when you're putting it in and thinking ahead a little bit so which is hard with yeah with the intentional eating speaking of so we talk about eating well throughout the day and whenever so you said it's not being intentional whenever you're like starving and you're cooking dinner right because you, you shouldn't be in that really i'm really hungry state you should be eating right you should have the snacked day. earlier yes mm -hmm. yeah so but now, speaking of that, I, I need to have snacks, like, easy snacks that aren't really bad for me that I can access that I don't have to, like, prepare mm -hmm. in that moment. Because I'm like, okay, well, I'm in the middle of doing this. I don't have time to eat, right? Right. How do you manage that? Like, the healthy snack foods, like, being prepared, like, do you buy them? Like, what are some examples? What do you do? So there is a couple of ways that you can do that. So I am a big, I'm a really big no seed oils girl. Like, and this is actually kind of recent because I kind of went down the rabbit hole of reading case studies on seed oils and, you know, double blind studies, all that. And, and I realized and vegetable oils. So seed oils and vegetable oils. So an example of a seed oil would be like what? Sunflower oil, um, uh, sesame seed oil. So things that those... I have come to believe are healthier. So, okay, continue. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> so sunflowers, like as it, like sunflower seeds, those seeds yes. inherently are not bad. It's how they process the oil. That's a whole nother episode. We're not going there. Okay. But it's how, but... So, and that is just a recent development. So I am working on recent development in my mind. Now, so I'm working on like making snacks ahead of time. So a lot of pre-made, even healthy pre-made snacks have those seed oils in them or even vegetable oils such as like canola oil and, and that sort of thing. Those, the way those are processed, it's atrocious. We're not going to get into the oh, science of it, but it is absolutely like, awful. My whole like food thing right now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So so swinging back to what you're saying of how to how to handle that, 
there are specific brands such as, and the one I can think of off the top of my head is Siete that will not use, like they use avocado oil or coconut oil. And if someone knows Siete, have them call me. Okay, great. I have love them Siete. We, we will do it. We'll do a commercial. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is they use those healthier oils. And so you can get, there are certain brands that you can find that have those pre-made snacks. Now, if I will make snacks ahead of time. So either the night before or the morning of, I will make all of us, so mine, David's, and Joshua's snacks for the day. It could be things like stick vegetables and prosciutto, uh, making sure that it the prosciutto doesn't have like nitrates and nitrites in it. So you can do slices of cheese and some almonds, apple and real peanut butter. Like peanut butter, you have to stir, mm -hmm. okay? Even if it says natural, if it says no stir natural, look on the back, I guarantee you there is like canola oil or something like that on the back of it to keep it from stirring. <sighs> I'm ruining everything, I know. Just go ahead and- I'm like thinking I'm doing I... really good right now and now you're naming all the things I'm not supposed to have. <laughs> So, small so think of it this way. Don't, small steps, please. Yeah. Small steps, okay? Because don't just go throw everything out of your pantry and just decide that you're going to, because you will quit mm. a little bit at a time, okay? Um, all There's all kinds of different snack ideas. So you could do like pretzel sticks and a banana, um, celery sticks with peanut butter. You can do ants on a log, like put some raisins on top of it. And do things like, um rice cakes and avocado as long as the rice is not gmo and like a hard boiled egg that was very filling because it has the fats it has the protein and it has the carb so when you're thinking ahead to your snacks i actually have a, a download on my website called 22 super easy healthy snack ideas and you can go on there and and grab it and but um you got to make it ahead yeah because Having that tray, we just have a bento box. It literally mm. looks like this. And you can see, this is what's left of Joshua's for the day. Like, it's got a little bit of cheese, blueberries, stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. So, I, ahead. I like that. So, I actually wrote that down um, for one of the things to talk about. So, spe speaking of small steps. Mm -hmm. So, I have transitioned. I've transitioned from more unhealthy or yeah more unhealthy to a little bit less unhealthy so i've switched to like a natural peanut butter but it's no stir so it's better than it was probably previously but not the of best course. right it is it is because the sugar is probably lower on it and the the uh, peanuts are probably non-gmo peanuts because it's in the natural so yes so, so work your way down yeah um i've been trying to buy less snacks so I did for as far as like healthy things anything made from scratch most likely is going to be better than anything store-bought accurate correct yes so depending on depending depending on your ingredients that you use but nine times out of ten yes okay so I can make so I make we make bread right so bread mm -hmm. I make is going to be better than the bread store-bought 100% so even if I'm just doing like a piece of toast with, uh, with my breakfast is like a piece of toast with avocado and boiled egg on top. Yum. Love it. Yes. Super um, good. But I've transitioned to that from that to previously, I would have used like store-bought bread, which isn't horrible, right? But I'm just like those small steps, right? And then, or like the sugary oatmeal that you buy in the packets. Mm-hmm. So just making those so small changes so 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 take it a meal at a time or even a snack at a time depending on where you are depending on where you are like if you're so so for my typical audience of this show as well as like my clientele they're somewhere in the middle right they're not brand spanking new to all of all the fitness and healthy stuff but they're not athletes either, right? Right. They're, they're, we're kind of in that middle of like, we're health conscious, but we're still learning. We're still learning a lot of things, right? So that that's typically where we are. So, so for those that are like super beginner, 
the clients that I've had, I have them start with a snack a day. Swap out that candy bar that you get out of the machine for something healthier or whatever. I don't feel like, you know, that's typically not the audience that's here. It's typically, we're more to that meal level of like swapping out some meals. Yeah. So, so work on a meal at a time. If you're a super beginner, work on a snack at a time and then work to a meal at a time. So I recommend if you're at that meal at a time, do breakfast. What you eat for breakfast sets you up for the entire day. And I'll give you some examples. So kind of an experiment that I did, um, a very easy experiment. An omelet with like vegetables and good bacon in it with a like piece with some coffee and like a piece of sourdough toast. Mm -hmm. My morning was completely different than when I simply had only coffee and just like plain toast with butter. When I had no protein, no fats, no nothing, it was just coffee and just a piece of toast. I was starving and cranky by 10 o'clock. That, when I have so, only carbs, I get hungry so much faster in the day. That's because they have a lower satiety rate. So your proteins have the highest satiety rate, followed by your fats, followed by your carbs. Okay, so the proteins will last me longer. Correct. Okay. Satiety rate means they fill you up. Um, and keep you full full longer. That's what satiety rate means, okay. right? Yeah. So, so like if you, and it's a cleaner fill, right? So you might feel, if you're trading out stuff that has a lot of chemicals in it for things that are more fresh, you might actually, your tummy might be telling you you're hungry, even though you've had six ounces of chicken with a little bit of dip and some avocado, you've had a well-balanced meal but your tummy's like, hey, you're still hungry. You're not still hungry. Your brain is working through those chemical, like, um, hey, we need this, we need this, we need this. If you don't believe me, go research it. <laughs> research it, research it, research it. Because they put because chemicals in our food me. that make us hungrier. Mm -hmm. Okay, just saying. <laughs> I love not medical advice, <laughs> do your own research. Not medical advice but I'm telling you, it's there. <laughs> makes me crazy. Oh, I love it. It makes me happy. Your, your what passion does? for things makes me happy. So my problem is, and I've actually talked to my sister about it. I'm, gonna call, I'm not going to name her, but I'm going to call her out for a second. Mm -hmm. um, when we are hungry yeah. but we don't have anything good to eat that's like healthy-ish we just mm -hmm. kind of like don't eat and we just wait for the next meal okay yeah that's a real thing but that's a real thing. that means i'm under eating though i'm not getting enough right. calories my one of my problems is not getting enough calories and i sometimes get very fatigued because of it mm -hmm. and then you probably end up with a headache sometimes yeah i just drink more so coffee no. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. That is a real thing, especially especially when those that like those of us that work out 3 to 4 or even maybe even 5 days a week, that 3 to 4 where we're conscious and we know what's in a snack in front of us and we're like I don't want to eat that because I know how it's going to make me feel. It might curb my hunger, but it's not going to push me to my goals. It's not going to fuel my body. Yeah. It will just simply take away. So I get that. I'm the same way. But, however, that is a lack of planning on our part. Yes. For not having something ready to roll. One of my um, best friends, she meal preps every single Sunday or Saturday. One week, one day of the weekend she meal preps she cooks everything for the entire week there's no way with my schedule i could do that i have to do it daily i prep us for the next day either the morning of or the day before because when i don't i do the exact same thing yeah i do the exact same thing where it's like i don't have anything made we're trying to do school i've following up with either clients potential clients i'm we're about to, we're building you know a chicken coop now we're we're about we're growing a garden it's springtime i'm being pulled in five thousand different directions if i do not plan i plan to fail yeah that's on me 
and whoever else. That is hard. I need yeah. to start. I just need to sit down and like plan. That's what I need to do. Because otherwise, I have things in the freezer that I haven't thought out yet, and I'm like, well, what are we gonna do? So a perfect example, even though it's not food, a perfect example is David and I were gone all weekend this weekend. We took a weekend away. We were gone all weekend. Normally, I clean house and prep the week, like prep our schedule for the week, whether it's, you know, it may not be food, but prep our schedule for the week on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We were gone until yesterday evening. And so, you know, David had his outside work that he was doing. I was getting stuff cleaned up on the inside. I didn't get my schedule done for this week like I do every week, and I have been lost all day. <laughs> all day. I've been lost. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I've, like my first day. So, anyway, same thing with food. It's the same thing. So It is. But why do we not prioritize food? Why do we just, like, we prioritize our schedules and the things we have to do, but not food? So we just put it on the back burner. I, I think because we've been fed too many different types of information. We have been fed so many different types of diets, so many different types of this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, but this is good. And then you find out later, no, wait, this is bad. It's like the egg yolk thing. It's like, don't eat yolks, only eat the egg whites. We've been eating a whole stinking egg <laughs> since we figured out an egg fell out of chicken's butt. Like we yeah. have eaten the whole egg until some marketer told us you can't eat yolks, it's bad for you. <laughs> what so the whole it's because it's been made too hard yeah food is simple it's been made too hard and it's it's really no fault of our own it's just that we're having to relearn because we were taught incorrectly mm -hmm. that's my take on it i can see that it's a little bit of it is time, right? And that's just mm -hmm. me having to manage my time. Sure. sure. Um, but yeah, sometimes it does feel hard whenever it's not. And I think I feel like I have to make all these different types of meals. When right. it's okay to have like the same thing every week, even if it's not every day. I have friends that said, I eat the same thing every day. And I'm just like, I do not know how you enjoy food. See, I, I could eat this day. I like variety, but when I'm in a season where it is just nuts. So like last year when I was writing the strength and purpose method, I was writing it and you were there. We were recording the videos and I was editing the videos. And then all, like I, all of this together, mm -hmm. I ate a lot of the same thing. And so did my family because I didn't have time to create variety. I knew what worked and that's what we ate. But so, but... Variety is the spice of life. Learning that there's more to life than chicken, rice, and vegetables. You, that And that's another thing, too, is people think that eating healthy, and we've talked about this, is boiled chicken, unseasoned vegetables, and butterless potatoes. And that's not true. It's just yeah. not. It's simply making the right decisions. Instead of buying a genetically modified potato and putting margarine on it, buy an organic potato and put uh, either organic or even raw milk on it. I've gone to drinking raw milk. That I probably should put a disclaimer out there. Drink <laughs> raw milk at your own risk. But, I mean, I've gone to raw milk. So, it's, it's not... It's... it's it's making those good choices of just trading out genetically modified for for regular for organic yeah. what I call regular organic. Yeah, one of the things, things that really... used to be called organic, it was simply food. Let's try true. that tin foil hat on for size. <laughs> one of the things that's really helped us eating healthy or more organic is worse with our gardening. I know you're starting the garden too. Uh, yes. I get so excited about my plants because I just we have like six little romaine lettuces and my spinach is coming up and our tomatoes mm -hmm. I'm so excited but the girls love it like yes even Joshua if the does things, too even if the things that we don't we buy in store normally and they don't like if it comes from our garden they will eat it yes yes it's a perfect example of that is tomatoes so last year we had a tomato plant that was just it put out so many tomatoes Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot keep up with it. If I buy a tomato from the store, Joshua will not eat it. 
like if I just put tomato on his plate, he's like, Mom, I don't like this. But if it's on our, if it's on the plant out front, he will pick it straight off and eat it. Yeah. He was like, this is so good. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. But you love that, right? You, that's way better than eating from a, of course. From a store. Of course. It's just funny because it's like, <laughs> here's a tomato, but here's a tomato. Tomato with dirt <laughs> or not. Give me the dirt. Every tomato time. that's not clean. Uh, pro- well, probably cleaner than it is in the store, honestly. It, it is cleaner. The dirt is cleaner than in the store, but that's another topic. <laughs> that's another tinfoil hat moment. Uh, so. I love it. It's so much fun, though. We, with the girls are getting into it. They, I yeah. found out that they really enjoy cherry tomatoes. Um, mm-hmm. There was this one time at my mom's house. One of my girls, I don't remember which one it was, but I think it was my younger and every time my mom handed her a cherry tomato, she thought she would like it, and she kept eating it. But every time she stuck it in her mouth, she spit it out because she did not like it. But mm-hmm. last year, we grew so many cherry tomatoes. We had a, a friend of my husband's. He gave us tomato plants, and a couple of them were cherry tomato plants, and they would just consume everything off of that bush. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mm-hmm. And it was it's incredible, but it's really it is. changed the way that I think the girls look at food too, but yeah, it, it, it's, it really is a real thing of, you know, my parents, you know, my mom kind of start, my parents kind of started the process. We've talked about this of the breaking of like generational bonds and stuff like that. My parents started that process and that includes food. So my mom was learning about it and she, you know, tried to teach me growing up, but she was brand new at it as well. Mm -hmm. And so getting Joshua involved in the growing of the food and the, I mean, even the chickens, like we're going to have chickens and the eggs, him seeing where the eggs come from, helping us raise the chicks and, you know, stuff like that, getting him involved. It takes it to a completely different level. Mm -hmm. It teaches him to appreciate where his food comes from, that it is not created in a factory somewhere. And it, it just, so it helps us bond but it also teaches him about life. Yeah. He's not just turning into some, you know, robot that consumes everything. He's able to produce as well. Yeah. So. The girls are learning. So I'm going to tell you this funny story. This is a little bit. Okay. Um, not the language we want to use with our kids, but John. Sure. Is on a specific diet of, uh, well, he was. He's not currently, but he was doing more of like a keto style Diet. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't eating uh, any like carbs, and so the girls would catch on. And except for on Saturday, he would allow himself to eat whatever he wanted. Uh, it was part of his like the slow carb, slow carb diet that he was on. That gives you a date on Saturday to eat whatever you want. Anyways, the girls would continually ask because they're very generous like can you eat this can you eat this and they try to hand him candy or something because they have candy from halloween Uh still because it's april and of course you do (laughs) (laughs) so they would just like and he's like no i'm on a diet i'm on a diet so the girls have picked out on this word which isn't necessarily a good thing but they they're kind of wrapping their heads around like what's healthy and what's not healthy things that are good for your body which i'm not opposed to and they're just like i think I think my older daughter said today she's like i'm on a diet i'm like oh yeah what are you what are you on a diet for she said but i want candy i'm on a candy diet <laughs> i'm on a candy diet there you go there you I'm go like, and then she runs off i was like okay well we'll we'll get there <laughs> <laughs> we'll adjust that wording we'll adjust that wording that's funny and then my youngest Tug keeps telling me that she's on an, a unicorn ice cream diet because we recently picked up unicorn ice cream from the store that they have in moderation, and uh, that's what they all—they just ask for it constantly. There you go, unicorn ice cream diet. It's so hard, Amber. They just love sugar, and I try to do it in moderation, and like mm-hmm. that's great. But I want them—I want them to eventually self-regulate. You know. How do you self-regulate? They're going to learn from you. They do. Well, and I, honestly, I don't crave sweets as much as I used to. And after I worked with you, Mm -hmm. so I've done, like, previous lifestyle changes or, like, small, 
uh, diet changes. I've done like the Whole30 a couple times, but I still afterwards would just like crave sweets, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just want to consume all of them. But after working with you, I did, I ate in moderation and I ate intentionally and I counted my calories and I was like, okay, I can have really whatever I want if I can stay under this calorie limit. That's fine. Um, but as I started eating, I'm like, well, I want to eat things that will make me full and slowly. And I didn't think I would get to this point because I would, I was like, okay, I've done all these different diets. I've changed, uh, the way I've eaten several times, but I've always still craved sweets like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it was that clicked or like my body changing, like slowly, uh, getting healthier foods in and like healthier sugars too. I just mm-hmm. don't because your have... body needs sugars. Yeah, it's the right kind. Well, and I don't have those like super intense cravings all the time anymore. Like sometimes I'll get a craving, but yeah, I just don't always want sugar. And I, so I, I got to figure out if it's something that I've changed dietary or like supplement wise that my body. So like, your okay, taste getting... buds changed. Yeah, your taste buds changed. So here's why your taste buds change so when we so americans tend to eat way over consume salt and way over consume sugar so that those salt there's somebody in your life that you can think of right this very moment that over salt stuff they're like i can't taste this and they just like pour salt all over their food they don't even taste their food first they just put salt on it. right they just start putting salt on it okay so that salt I don't, this probably isn't the technical term, but it kind of burns up your taste buds a little bit where it's like, it makes it harder for you to to like flavor your food. There's without like over salting it. I'm not doing a good job of saying what I'm trying to say. I'm with you. I'm with you. You're good. But the point is, is like, if you can't, if someone can't taste their food, they just douse it with salt, right? Until they get it to that point of like, okay, I can taste this now. So sugar, you can change your taste buds if you've oversalted your food and if you've overconsumed sugar. Used to, when I was in college, I would go to Starbucks and get the um, like most sugary of drinks and just and and consume them and thought they were great. When I started realizing, yeah, when I started realizing what was in them, how much sugar was in them, I was thinking, oh my goodness, like I didn't realize this. So I started backing off on just making small changes. And over the course of time, I now do not even sweeten my coffee. Mm -hmm. I I don't. I put in, I'll put in um, like raw cream or I'll do like nut pods. I love the brand nut pods. You know, they can call us too. And, (laughs) but I love the brand nut pods and um, I don't sweeten at all. In fact, this weekend, uh, when we were gone, David went to go get me coffee. He said, how do you want it? I said, just black. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah. And so, um, your taste buds can change. Yeah. So, and I think it's because, because I consume in moderation. Same with you. You were saying you used to crave sweets, even after doing Whole30, even after doing this, your body just craved sweets. But after working with me, we made the small changes. We made adjustments. Go half sweet on your coffees. Work your way back to quarter sweet on your coffees and different things like that. Allowing just smaller portions of that, it completely changes your taste buds. Yeah, so I've noticed a big difference for sure. And if I have sweeter coffees, like sometimes I will go out for coffee with my husband, but those sweeter coffees do not. I used to get like three extra pumps of caramel like in my drinks. And now I would like, <laughs> that is a lot. I would not yeah, be able to drink lot. it. I'm like, what was I yes. doing? <laughs> you were, you were, you were feeding the monster. Oh, you were man. feeding the monster. But it is, it is a real thing. You can t- change your taste buds. And if you try to do it all at once, if you just go, you know what? I'm going to change my taste buds. I'm taking out all the sugar. I'm taking out everything. You're going to set yourself up for failure. But if you will do it one thing at a time. Yeah. Seriously, one thing at a time. So, I think that's give my yourself some problem grace. too, because he's like, no carbs. I'm like, if carbs aren't bad, and I, I feel like I feel like you, Amber, because like you're like carbs aren't bad. Carbs aren't bad. Not. 
like potatoes they come from the ground rice comes from mm -hmm. the plant these are not bad things it's mm -hmm. not processed sugars <clears throat> but i don't know i've i've learned that eating eating things from the ground in moderation it's good it's good it's fine mm -hmm. yes yes there's some of the healthiest countries in the world that are considered some of the healthiest countries in the world eat an overabundant i say overabundance they eat a lot i overabundance to, um, inclines that they eat too much which if they're the health some of the healthiest countries in the world anyway they eat a lot of rice a mm. lot of rice and they keep their meats lean they eat rice and their vegetables like mm. they keep it so simple if you were to go look it up doing your own research i always encourage people to do the research just just research Go look stuff up. Don't rely on mainstream media. Go to the little off-handed and just look. Look at double blind studies, that kind of thing, and do your own research. You will see the simpler you keep your food, the healthier, the overall healthier you will be. Mm. It is very, very simple. God created food to come from plants and animals. Yeah. He didn't create factories in the Garden of Eden. He created food sources that are natural. The closer yeah. you get to the farm, the closer you get to the ground, the closer you get to, you know, whatever your whatever hunting season it is, the healthier you will be. Yeah. Keep it simple. Keep it is simple. there anything else you want to add that you think is really important for food? When it comes to food, I've given over the, over the course of my time as a coach, even especially early on, I would use the terms like diet. So if you find out, find old articles of mine from back in the beginning, I did. I used terms like diet. I, I was in, uh, and so. <laughs> You're cringing uh, at your, yourself. I, I, if you don't, okay, look. If the first products and stuff you put out, if you're not embarrassed by them, you started too late, okay? <laughs> You gotta stop I was before you're good. I was cringy in the beginning. I was very cringy in the beginning. And who knows? I may still be cringy to some people. But keep it simple. Plan ahead and keep it simple. If you're at this point where you know you need to make changes, change one thing at a time. Oh, that's another thing. I have what's called a, a five-day clean, clean up your eating clean challenge. And um, and that's on my website too. And it and for five days, you make a change in one area. And mm -hmm. I tell you what area to make a change in. So that's on the website as as well. And I we can put a link in the description for it. So sweet. There you go. Easy peasy. Well, thank you, Amber, for all your You're information. Welcome. <laughs> You're I welcome. It. I get I it love... really wrapped around the axle when it comes to food. That's okay. You can tell people are. Yeah. Uh, the people who are passionate about things. Your passion makes me want to learn more. For sure. Good. Good. That that that's awesome. So there I, I do. I get really wrapped around the axle when it comes to food and I think it's because I'm continuing to learn. Even yeah. though I've been at the I've been in the health industry for well over ten years. I worked in, you know, um before I was a trainer, I worked in the industry, like in a clinic, like underneath yeah. a, a PT and stuff like that. But um, I've learned so much and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still learning so much. So I think the biggest thing is like, don't be afraid to, to start now. The time's gonna pass anyway. So start making s these small changes because they really do add up over time. So. Yes. Well, thank you for listening to Jesus Coffee Barbells. You can find us on Instagram at Jesus Coffee Barbells. No periods, no spaces, all one word. If you would like, uh, Amber and I are wanting to do a question and answer podcast soon, so you can send any questions or comments you have to our email address, which is Jesus Coffee Barbells at gmail.com. Next episode, we will be talking about the book Captivating. We are going to do a book review by Stacy Eldridge. Is that correct? Yes, John and Stacy Eldridge both wrote it. Awesome. I'm excited. I've read this book. I'm going to browse through it again. You've read this book? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, I read this book. I, we actually did a kind of a like book 
our small group did like a book Bible study. So like we got out our Bibles and like we're looking up some of the things that they said. So I don't know if you want to call it a Bible study, if you want to call it a book club, but it was like our small group. So yeah, yeah we, we went through it. We really dug into it. Some of the stuff we agreed with, some of the stuff we didn't, but hey, I'm excited to talk about it because it really changed my view on some things. Mm-hmm. It cleared some things up and it also, yeah, it was good. I'm excited. My name is Amber George. You can find me on Instagram at Refined by Iron. And my name is Sarah Hoffman. You can find me on Instagram at Mommy McMomface. Remember that anything that I, we have said about food today is not medical advice. Always check with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your lifestyle. Yes, we will see you next time.